So today I want to share with you one of my latest acquisitions in my watch collection. I feel like I always say that, but it's actually the right way to describe it. I just bought finally a watch that I've been looking for for over 10 years. But before I get into it, there's a story on how I got this Daytona Zenith 16520. So I've always loved the Zenith Daytonas. It's crazy to think though that 10 years ago, these watches were selling for $7,000. 10 years ago, this was a $7,000 watch. And back then people used to say, well, you know, the movement is made by Zenith, you know, then after they started making the in-house movement, everybody's opinion changed. You hear this all the time. Well, this is the new in-house movement. In-house movement is the word you always hear all the time in the watch world. But this is one of those situations where we should have known that the previous non-in-house movement was gonna be one of the collector's items in this lineup. I, for one, did not see this coming. But there was a client that I met over eight years ago, which he was a true visionary, and he's the one that got me started on this hunt for this watch. So it started with this guy that came into the office and said, hey Eric, I've been following your YouTube channel. I know you know about watches, but I'm looking for a very particular piece and I want you to help me find it. He sat there and explained to me well ahead of this time that the Zenith Daytona was gonna be the next collector's item in the series of the Daytonas. I thought to myself, well, it kind of makes sense. You know, it kind of makes sense at that time. But still at that time, I didn't even think about buying one. But what he wanted was something very specific. He said he wanted a 1999, the last year. I know they did do a couple in 2000. There are a couple runs there in the 2000s. But what he wanted was, he said, a 99 will do. But most importantly, what he wanted was a full set, collector set, never been polished with everything. And I said, okay. I'm gonna to try to find that for you. And it gave me, he gave me about a month and a half to try to locate one. Around that time is when the IWJG shows, in my opinion, were actually good. Nowadays, I use them more like a social event. You know, or maybe fill in a couple orders for expensive prices. But I ended up running into the particular exact watch that he wanted. I looked at it, unpolished, black dial, 1999, had the hand tag, had everything, full set. I called the guy up and I said, I just found the watch that you want. And he said, what's the price? I said, it's gonna cost you $17,500. Now think about this. When these watches were going for $7,000, $17,500 just sounded like so much money for that watch that all of my peers at that moment in the business said, are you crazy buying this? I said, well, the guy wants it. You know, without even a deposit at that time, just by, just word, the guy seemed so legit that I said, you know what, I'm gonna buy it. Sure enough, I bought it, he wired that same day. By the time I came back from LA, I had the watch in my hand, I showed it to him, he trusted me on the condition and he was happy about the watch. And ever since then, that always stuck in my head saying, man, I would really like one of those not knowing that they would then end up shooting up to almost $50,000. Now the difference between a Zenith Daytona full set for $50,000 compared to a ceramic bezel, I think the differences are huge because for one, the ceramic bezel is still in production and it's kind of like a hype thing. Whereas the Zenith slowly but surely just went going up and up and up in the market. And I truly think that this guy was a visionary at that time. But the crazy part about it is that since then, it's taken me almost 10 years to find a full set at a realistic price because I can go out there and just pay $48,000 and just buy one on eBay probably. But that's not what nobody wants to do, right? I didn't think so. Some of the things that I like about the Zenith model over the 116520 it's things like starting with the thinner hour markers on the dial. Those little details I like. The thinner hands, thinner hour markers, 
and I also like the matte finish on the dial. Personally, I like the way it looks. And I like the buckle too, surprisingly. It just gives it that nostalgic feel. So here's a story on how I finally hunted down this watch. Well, usually people would say, how did you find it? And I like to say with these type of watches, it found me. It's really the way it happened. I was sitting on my desk one day and Keon was going over some of the emails and some of the inquiries that we get. And he says, hey Eric, there's a guy selling a Zenith Daytona black dial, uh, 1999. You're not interested in that, right? And I said, does it have box and papers? And he goes, turns his laptop around and shows me the full set with everything. And I said, how much does he want? Price was in the 20s. Yes, the market was a little bit higher then than it is now. They have simmered down a bit, but being a full set with the hand tag and all, with the serial hand tag, not the Rolex one, you can buy those wherever. When he gave me the price, I told him, call this man right now. And sure enough, we negotiated on a price. I sat there and I waited patiently for the watch to come in because one thing is seeing pictures, another thing is seeing it in person. And surprisingly, the guy flew into Miami two days later and brought me the watch to my desk. So in the pictures, the watch looked a little bit rough, had like a tremendous amount of hairline scratches and stuff on there. You know, pictures sometimes look super dramatic. Uh, in this case, actually, it looked, it looked a little bit better on pictures. When I saw it, it looked even worse. But what I did notice is number one, the guy that I bought it from was the original owner of the watch. Number two, it had never been polished. So even though it's all scratched up, especially the buckle, I feel that's the worst part right now, watch had never been polished. Looks like he really wore the hell out of the watch. And number two was that the bracelet was not stretched, nice and tight. Because sometimes people will wear these watches all day, every day, and they'll kind of stretch out the bracelet where in between the links, they wear out. That's one of the, my pet peeves on, on the bracelets. You know, it's not so much how tight it is, but also is there that gap or that play between the links? So I did negotiate for a while, but I knew that I wanted the watch, especially when I matched the serial hand tag and the papers and everything. I thought to myself, holy shit, am I gonna finally get the Zenith Daytona? I mustered up, paid the price, and got the watch. And I love it, and I think it's a great addition to my collection. Now, the number one question for me that I battle all the time is, should I have the watch detailed or refinished? It's something that's really tormenting me. Because on one hand, I could send it to one of these really, really high-end refinishers like Pendulum Lab or places like that that I follow on IG, and they can resurface, refinish the whole watch. Plus, I happen to have bought a replacement bezel for this piece that comes in the blister pack. Factory from Rolex, not easy to get, but I figured just in case. So I'm kind of torn. Do I refinish the watch or do I just leave it original like this? The thing is, is if I, if I refinish the watch and I leave it day one, then when I kind of wear it, you know, it's almost like wearing a brand new watch. Whereas right now, it kind of has that character. I kind of like it. I kind of enjoy using it just like this. I mean, I should have thought of that before I paid $1,500 for a blister pack bezel, but here we are. So since I don't plan to sell this watch, I think I might just leave it like this for now with its character so I can wear it and not worry about it. I mean, it would need a crystal and all. Movement runs perfect, so it doesn't need any service as of now. It may need it in the future though. And then I also have the option of possibly sending it to Rolex, which I don't know if I have the, the guts to do that. It's just so time consuming, so expensive. I don't know. I'd almost rather go with an independent place and just get it done, give them the business. Honestly, it's not like Rolex needs it. And it's not like I care about having the service card because this watch is gonna be a keeper and I plan to leave it in the collection for a while.
So the crazy thing about the three modern stainless steel uh, Daytonas is, is that my preference is black dial on the Zenith, white dial on the 116520, and white Panda on the ceramic version. It's just my overall preference. I do like all of them, but for some reason with this layout of the dial, I prefer the black over the white as opposed to the other ones. But there you go, that's my lineup. And this is my new Zenith Daytona that I am pumped about. Actually, on my last video I just released where the diamond set Grandmaster chimes and all that, a couple people put in the comments what type of watch was I wearing and that I should do a wrist check. It was this watch that I was wearing in that video. If you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel.